When you power up your stereo or flip on a light switch, you're tapping into a form of energy called electricity. Electricity is the energy produced when electrons, the tiny negatively charged particles within atoms, move through a conductive material such as a metal. Electricity and the closely related force called magnetism make up another important area of physics. There's a couple different categories of electricity. Static electricity is one that we're familiar with. If you rub a balloon on your hair and it makes your hair stand up or rub your feet on the carpet and shock somebody, that's static electricity that you're building up by separating charges. Then you have moving charges, which is really the electricity that we tend to think of as powering things and accomplishing things like sending signals to our muscles and making our muscles contract or lightning where you build up a, a static charge between a cloud and the earth and then that current flows all of a sudden and you get a lightning bolt. So that's the moving charge of an electrical current from the ground up. Current is some charge that's flowing or moving. Usually we think of electrons flowing through a piece of wire, that's a current and they flow because of the potential voltage that's applied. They're driven, like by gravity, they're driven across that wire, and that moving charge is the current. Voltage is the potential difference where we separate charges, where we have plus charge on one side and minus charge on the other side, where we get all the electrons on one side, and then they're attracted to each other. So that potential field is the voltage, field, voltage force. If we think about all the elements of a circuit, we would have conductors and resistors, capacitors, inductors, uh, batteries, or other power supplies. And each one of those has a different job or a different role. And they won't do anything until we hook them all together. There will be no current flowing, no charges moving, until we connect them together into a loop. Electricity and magnetism are inseparable. They always go together. Whenever you have a current flowing through a wire, there's a magnetic field around that wire every wire everywhere. Whenever you have a magnetic field, if you stick a wire in that field, a current will start to flow. The magnetic field will induce a current in that wire. And those two relationships happen all the time. You can't separate them. If you've ever had an x-ray, used a microwave oven, or even listened to the radio, you've benefited from a type of energy called electromagnetic radiation. Actually, we're bombarded by this type of energy all the time from the sun. Electromagnetic radiation includes waves with a wide variety of frequencies and wavelengths. Altogether, they make up the electromagnetic spectrum, an energy source that scientists have learned to harness for many useful applications. This spectrum also includes a type of energy we can see, visible light. The electromagnetic spectrum covers the whole length from very long wavelengths to very short wavelengths and that then it's broken down into different types of waves like x-rays and gamma rays and ultraviolet and, and all those types. All the electromagnetic waves in the spectrum are all traveling at the speed of light. They may have a different wavelength and a different frequency but those have to go together to balance out in the speed of light. If the frequency goes up the wavelength goes down and vice versa. Now the range that's visible light is a very, very small sliver of that whole spectrum. And that's the range that our eyes are sensitive to. If we looked at detectors for all different kinds of waves, like an antennas are detectors for radio waves, for example. Our eyes are detectors that, that respond to a certain wave, wavelength, a certain range of wavelengths or frequencies. And so that's what we call visible light and we give it names for each of the colors. We start with a very long wavelength, low frequency. That's what we would use to transmit power and telephone signals. If we go then to a shorter wavelength, a little bit higher frequency, then we get into the range of radio waves. We come back a little bit more, a little bit shorter uh, wavelength, higher frequency, we get into the microwave range.